tribe of Judah, right? So according to the Bible, there's a, there, there's a way that we carry out a marriage, right? Give me Exodus chapter 22 and verse 16 first. All right, read what you got. Exodus ch chapter 22 verse 16. And if a man entice a maid, that is not betrothed. So when you first, two, you first started talking, you know, you were kicking the game, you know what I'm saying? You were saying your sweet nothings to him, right? So that's that's the enticing of me part, right? Read, come on. And lie with her. So eventually, you two are sexually active, right? So eventually, the two of you have sex. What does God say that we have to do once you take that step? Read. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. Because that's how you make it honorable in the sight of God. Right. Hold that, give me Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. You got to remember, you are a son of God. This is a daughter of God. So as your sister in Christ, in terms of you being a son and you being y'all being children of God, you have to understand that you have to treat her a certain way. And the same thing goes for you, sis. You got to treat him a certain way. And the Bible lays it all out for us. So let me start with the, with the, the marriage part. Read. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. God say Marriage is honorable in all. So not boyfriend and girlfriend, right. not just like, you know, the two of you together. How long y'all been together? Seven years. Woo. You know, that's how long Jacob waited for, for actually it's twice that, that Jacob waited for his wife. Right. He, loved, he loved his wife so much, or he loved this woman so much, Rachel, that he waited 14 years for this woman. But as soon as he had the chance to take it, he took it as his wife. Because right. he understood this. That's our forefather. The forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. Because he understood this. Read it again. Marriage is honorable in all. Because understanding that the marriage is honorable will be able to show the children that you two bear to their children that this thing is ordained of God. God did this for He set this up from the beginning that a man should leave his house with his mother and his father and should cleave to his wife. But there's a specific way how God says we have to do it. Right? Read that one more time. Read. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. Because with the two of you being married according to the scriptures, according to the law, the way the law has it set up, according to that, whatever the two of you do behind closed doors is is all, is all fair game. Because right. the two of you are married. You understand? Read on. But, homeowners and so for seven years that you haven't had this woman and take this woman as your wife, legally, according to God's laws and according to the way this, this world is set up, God says what? But, homeowners and adulterers, uh -huh. God will judge. Because right now you're in the midst of homemongering. Right. Because think about it like this. At any moment, right? And I'm not saying that that's the case. Y'all been together for a long time, right? So I'm not saying that that would happen. And God forbid it happens. But if you decided you you wanted to go with somebody else, or you decided you wanted to go with somebody else, that would put the two of you in the midst of fornication. You understand? What did God say again? But 
whoremongers, and adulterers. God will judge. So the two of you have been together for seven years. You have children? No, not yet. But the two of you are sexually active. So the two of you are sexually active. God says that the two of you need to become married. Right. That's according to God's laws. Right. You understand? Now give me Romans chapter 13 and verse 1 real quick. Because a lot of times people will say, well, because we Israelites, what's like it says? We say, okay, we Israelites, we don't have to do what America's, we don't have to keep America's way. We just keep God's laws, right? We don't have to get papers. But here's what God says. Listen to this. Romans chapter 13. You got a question, right? Okay, let's go. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but God. You, you understand that? All the higher powers, all that's in authority over us, even though we're in captivity. What does God say? Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. We have to be subject to the higher powers. In America, in order for you to, to be legally married, legally as a couple, let me show you why. We are. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but God. So God has set up this place called America and the people that run it over us because of our sins like the brother had brought out before. And I'm pretty sure the officer was going over it with you too. Because of our sins, we now have to serve in captivity. Now we have to follow after the laws. Instead of following God's laws in peace, now we have to follow the laws of the people that God has set over us in captivity. You understand that? So God says those people that he set up over us, he gave them the power. You understand? So in, their, in them having the power, in order for you to be able to pass anything on from whatever, the, say something would have happened to you. You work, right? Something happens to you at work. And God forbid you pass away. God forbid you get hurt to the point where you can't work anymore. Right now, according to, the, according to how it's set up in America, your wife because that's what she is, your wife would not be able to uh, benefit from whatever estate that you may have. Like if you leave, if you have life insurance, if you have an estate, which basically means you have uh, property, if you have uh, belongings that you will hold to pass on to your, to, to, to your beneficiaries, which would be your children or your wife, you wouldn't be able to do that with her and her, your, your family mother, brother, sister, father, they will benefit from it because the two of you aren't together. Right? Get that. Absolutely. Because who gave Esau the power? The Most High. Right. Absolutely. No, I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. Because you got to understand, everything that Esau has in terms of laws, he got it from the Bible. He got it from our forefathers. He got it from God. That's why God gave him the power. So check this out. Wait. Tobit, chapter 7, verse 11. I have given my daughter in marriage to seven men who died. Give me 13. 13. Verse 13. Then he called his daughter Sarah, uh -huh. and she came to her father, and he took her by the hand. So we read before that if a man entices a maid, and, what, and he lays with her, he has to make her her wife, make him his wife. So now we're going to read exactly how it's supposed to be done, according to the laws that God gave us. All right? Come on. And she came to her father, and he took her by the hand, uh -huh. and gave her to be to be wife to to both to Tobias. So in the time of in the in biblical times, our fathers or the father of the young woman would give his daughter to the to her husband, because there was no like single parents. No, uh, your daughter leaves the house. And now she lives on her own. She doesn't live, she lives by herself. She's an independent woman. That's not how it was. The women of the Bible either live with their fathers or their husbands. Right. That's it. You understand? So read that part again. 
Then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came to her father, and he took her by the hand, and gave her to be wife to Tobias. That's just showing that the scripture is a scripture that says that if you're going to give your wife, it's a weighty matter to give your wife, to give your daughter to be married. And make sure that when you give her a way to be married, make sure you give her to a man of understanding. That's right. A man that keeps God's commandments. So it's good that you are with a man that knows he has to keep God's commandments. You got to find the truth together, but that's all. That's what I'm trying to show you. That's still according to the Most High, because think about this. The two of you find the truth together, but he might have a demon on him. Not saying that you do, but he might have a demon on him, and he says, I don't want to wear no fringes. Matter of fact, I want you, tomorrow morning, I want you to wake up and cook me, cook me some breakfast. I want eggs and bacon. You understand? But that's the thing, you have to understand that when we were giving our daughters away, we were giving them to men who knew they had to keep God's commandments. We watched them grow up as young men. Watch them grow up from boys to now they men. Right. And now I can say, you know what, I know his father, and I know his forefather before him. And I know he comes from good stock. Right. I know he comes from the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. So I can definitely say, you know what, my daughter's perfect for that brother. That's a match made in heaven. So the two of you to coming together in the truth, understanding that you're Israelites, so you got to keep God's commandments, that is a match made in heaven. But you have to still go according to God's commandments. You understand? Read on. Saying, behold, take her after the law of Moses. The law of Moses. So that's how we take our wives, according to the law of Moses. And he's going to explain exactly what that means. Read. And led her away to thy father, uh -huh. and he blessed them, uh -huh. and called Edna his wife, uh -huh. and took paper, and took what? And took paper, and took paper, read, and did write an instrument of covenants and sealed it. So what today will be the paper and the instrument of covenants that we would use to signify or seal the deal, if you will? A what's this? Where do you get that from? The courthouse. That's where we get it from. We go back to Romans chapter 13, verse 1. That's why you got to understand we're in captivity. Right. That's apocrypha. Yep. That's the apocrypha. Read it again. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are... That Wait, slow down, slow down. The powers that be are ordained of God. The powers that be are ordained by God. So, you go to the courthouse. Yeah, you say you go to another nation. Whether you live here in America or in, in Britain or in Jamaica... You still have to go through another nation because we still under cap we still in captivity for breaking God's commandments, for breaking that commandment. For, for breaking God's commandments. Now, every, all the other nations, they hate that. They hate that you have to, that you're learning now how to come back to your true heritage. That you gotta keep God's commandments. Hell, our own people, they hate it. Our own people hate that. So that's why you see all this going on. Because we are in hell. This is not our rest. The Bible says this is not our rest. So we have to keep God's commandments like getting married, getting them papers so that we can go back home and keep God's commandments in peace. All right, read that again. Finish verse 2. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinance of God. So if you resist the power, what are you resisting? You're resisting the ordinance of God. Read on. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. You understand what that means? You're resisting the power that God set up. God created you. How can you resist 
what he gave you to live. Give me that. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 15. Because honestly, when we come out here to show our people, the blacks, Spanish, and Native Americans, and the Israelites, they only see this book as a religious, as a religious book, a religious entity. Not realizing that this very book is a one, not only a one way that we're gonna get, that, that's a one way that we're gonna get out of this hell, but it's gonna be able, something that we're gonna be able, something we're gonna be able to use to teach our children so that they can then teach their children and so on and so forth. Because all we knew in the world was, I'm gonna just take this woman, knock her down, you know, if, you know, she, if she act right, she go, she'll stay with me. You know what I mean? I might marry her, I might not. But that's my prerogative. God says, no, it is honorable to make this woman your wife. It is honorable to do that thing. We so what? Chapter 42 and 7. And not only it is honorable to do it the right way. It's crazy. It's honorable to do it the right way. The way God has it set up. Read. Do, deliver all things in number and weight. Deliver all things in number and weight. The Bible says deliver all things in number and weight. Like, you go into business with somebody, right? And they may be your childhood friend. You may grow up with them. You don't expect him to rob you, or you don't expect him to skim a little bit off the top. That's why the Bible says to do what? Deliver all things in number and weight. So if something like that happens, now you can produce the papers to the powers that be, so that if anything goes wrong, now you can say, okay, well, we, we made a covenant. We made a covenant that we will work together and get this money. It's the same thing in a marriage. You're working together for one common goal, to bring forth the family, to be happy. You understand? To, to, to extend your posterity. Yeah, but that's with the other nations. I'm going to show you that. Give me that. Do the whole act. Do the wrong each other. Read. Read on. Read on. And put. Deliver all things in number and weight. And put all in writing that thou givest out or receivest so everything that you put out and everything that you take in, put it in writing. That's wisdom. Because like I said, at any moment, the devil could jump on either one of the two of y'all. And you say, you know what? I don't... Straight up. The devil could jump on any one of the two of y'all at any moment and y'all say, you know what? I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to keep these commandments. We say, yeah, nah, that ain't going to happen. No, no, that's not going to happen. I'm going to keep these commandments. But the devil jumped on Saul. Hell, the, je the devil jumped on David. It dumped, jumped on Solomon. You understand? So we have to make sure that we're uh, adhering to these commandments because it's the wisdom that's going to give us life. It's the wisdom that's going to get us out of this hell. Look, we standing here trying to find out how we could perfect keeping God's commandments. The people are revving their engines, burning, well, burning their tires, blowing their horns. So some people screaming out their window, white power, Satan rules, all of that kind of madness. And all we out here trying to do is gather our people back together so that they can come and get out of the bottom and the decayed state that they're in. You understand? We go. Chapter 30, verse 14. But the word is very nigh unto thee. So the, the Bible is near to us. The Bible's, think about this. We've been in captivity here in America for over 400 years, give or take, right? And this Bible's been here the whole time. But the whole time we were here for at least 250 out of that whole 500 or 400 years, we weren't allowed to read. You understand? We weren't even allowed to, to, to learn to read on our own. Learn how to write. So it's for a real long time, we didn't have the understanding. And even now, in the Christian churches, we don't get the understanding of the truth about the Bible. Right. 
So exactly. So the sister said that even though we learn how to read, they still take a whole 14 books out of the Bible just to just to trip us up and, and put a stumbling block in front of us. Now, 2018, we get the understanding. The brothers is out on the street teaching it. Now we gotta hear people revving the engines. Blowing their horns, right. making all kinds of noise to stop the word of God, but that don't stop nothing. Right. You can't stop the word of God. Right. The Bible says you can't do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Right. So all that they do is just to show you that this Bible is a true book. Right. Right. Read it again. But the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mightest do it. So this word ain't been far from us. We got it now in 2018. The Bible's been with us from our fathers, forefathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers. The Bible's been here the whole time. But now the Most High is pouring out His Spirit upon brothers, young men, young men, to come out and do His bidding to teach, teach His people to come back to Him. You understand? That means we got to do exactly what God says. Give me that whole act, get uh, Judges 5 and 11. Because in order for us to, to get the kingdom that we seek, to get up out of this hellhole that we in, we have to keep these commandments. There's no other way. And although there's, there's plenty of other people out here that's teaching the Bible, they ain't teaching the truth about it. Because here it is, you have, your understanding was, well, you should have made covenants with the other nations. But the covenant that God is saying to make is with him. The covenant God is saying to make is a covenant with him. That's just keeping his commandments. Right. That's the covenant. You understand? Read. Judges chapter 5 verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. So they that are delivered from the noise of archers. Archers don't make noise. You know what bow and arrow sound like? It's real quiet. It's talking about nuclear missiles that's going to hit this place. And this is going to be quiet over here. It's gonna be nothing but it's the, the Bible says ain't gonna be it's just gonna be a place for birds. You understand? It's gonna be for the birds, literally. Me. They that are delivered from the north. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. In the places of drawing water. The place of drawing water is where we served in slavery. That's here in America, right? In the Caribbean. Hell, still in Africa. South America, Central America, those are the places of drawing water where the Israelites are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Me? There shall they rehearse the righteous act. So all those places that we were scattered, that's where we would have to rehearse the righteous acts. What are the righteous acts? What, what does it mean? What does it mean to be righteous? To keep the commandments. So what are righteous acts? The laws and the commandments. So here's where we would have to rehearse and keep those commandments so that when Christ comes to level this place, the Bible says he's going to sweep it with the besom of destruction. That means he's going to clean this place with fire. Ain't going to be nothing left over here. So in order for us to escape it, we got to be rehearsing these commandments. We got to be keeping God's commandments. Our mind, go back to Deuteronomy 30, our mind literally has to be on these commandments 24-7. It can't be no other way. So even though I heard you say before that you, you said you were sick, right? Okay, okay. But that all that means is when you have a chance, when you're healthy, whatever you got, you got to put fringes on your garments. No matter what it is, whatever skirt you got, put fringes on them so that you don't get caught out there. Because there's a judgment for those when Christ comes back that if they're in strange apparel, he's going to put them to death. So we have to be keeping these commandments. Our mindset has to be keep these commandments. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what mama say, daddy say, sister, brother, best friend. I don't care what nobody say. I'm keeping God's commandments until I die, until Christ comes. All praises to the most. That's good. I'm going to tell you why. That's better for you because now there's no stumbling blocks in your way. The trials that's going to come, you will get trials. Stuff is going to happen. The Bible says it's going to be... 
The Bible says it's going to be trouble in the flesh. So I'm sure every so often the two of you get into little arguments, but that's what the Bible says is going to happen. But are you going to just be like, you know what, to hell with him, to hell with her? Nah. Nah. That's why this place got to be destroyed. Right. That's why this place got to be destroyed. All this noise, they, 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 they got to they, they gotta live it up now. Because it's going to come a time real soon. This place is going to be absolutely quiet. Hey, hey. All you're going to hear is the crackling of the bones. The crackling of the heat that's going to be in this place. All right? Read what he got. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good. So God has said he has set before us life and good. That's these commandments that give us life. So no matter what anybody tells us, what, they, what they've taught us in the churches or what they've taught us in schools, this is our heritage. These are the customs and traditions that God gave to us, his people, the children of Israel. Right? We are. And death and evil. So the flip side to it is, well, we heard that we have free will, right? We can do whatever the hell we want. God said, yeah, you can do whatever you want. I give you life and good if you keep my commandments. And on the flip side of that, when you want to do whatever the hell you want, what does he give you? And death and evil. So he gives you death and evil. The death being that the fact that you get put to death, miserable deaths, whether it be in famine or sickness, right? Whether it be in a plague or evil, which is a captivity we need right now. That's the evil that we have to serve. And because our forefathers kept sinning, kept sinning, and kept sinning, now we have right now the last chance to rehearse the righteous acts and keep God's commandments before the absolute end comes. Because after this is no more, we get another shot at it. We get another try. After this is no hitting the reset button to start all over again. This is it. This is all we got. Just as much as we are all we got. So, as a brother, when you come amongst the brothers and a sister, you come amongst the family, you'll be around brothers, you'll be around brothers, you'll be around sisters, and we be all together, making sure that we are all in the same mind. Making sure we all have the same mind to keep these commandments. So, just like tonight, we're showing you that's not, that's not correct according to those covenants of the other nations. God ordained these people to be over us for our sins. So, we have to follow their rules because God gave it to them. We read it in the Bible. That's a law for Moses that they showing that they basically carrying out so we can still keep God's commandments. Damn. That's beautiful. You understand? That's why God says, I give you what? Read it again. I give you this day life and good and death and evil. So you got to give all praises to the most High for that. Because although we are here in captivity, we still get the chance. Although, however, it's whatever tribulations we go through, we still have a chance to keep God's commandments. Right. Ain't no excuses after this. No, but you still have to. Go back to Romans 13 and 1. Okay. But you don't keep their laws. You have to. You pay taxes, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because if you don't, the, uh, first P, was it First Peter 3? Uh, subject? Be subject? Yeah, give me that. The rule chapter 3 verse 8. The rule chapter 3 verse 8. Check this out, because although you pay taxes, you pay it. You may pay mortgage or rent. You pay a car note. You pay, you pay. You got to pay. You pay toll to get on the highway to go somewhere. You got to pay. And that's so, that's a sign. That's a sign. Read. The root, chapter 3, verse 8. What? Behold, we are dead this day in our captivity. Read that again. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. We are yet this day, 2018, what is this, February 2nd, February 3rd, 2nd, 2018, yet this day in our captivity. Right now we in captivity. So, what's a sign that we in captivity? Check this out, check this out. Where thou hast scattered us, for a reproach and a curse throughout the four corners of the earth, you can go, I don't care if you go to London, you can go to Australia, you can go to China. There's a place in China called Guangzhou City, Chocolate City. 
And guess who's there? <laughs> and guess what? Guess what it is? No, it's us, Chocolate City, sis. Chocolate City in China. There's nothing but blacks over there. Absolutely. You go to India. You, India. You find out you, there's a people called the the city. The city right. people. We that part to get about scattered. Where thou has scattered us. The scripture says that we'll be the word of the curses will be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And that, that's the Bible showing you that it's true. We are yet this day in our captivity. Whatever slum or ghetto you go to or whatever cities around the world, who do you find there? Our people. Right. The Israelites. Right. God says you will be cursed in a city. That's a sign. Right. We. And for a reproach. The reproach is that, oh, these, that's why they call it Chocolate City. And they make sure you can't live nowhere outside of that place. They make sure they redline you so when you go to the realtor, like, I want to find a nice place so I can raise my children and have a family. Right. But I don't have to hear gunshots every damn night. So, all right, cool. Yeah, I'll I find you a place. And where they put you, Raw Beach. Where they put you, Lake Worth. Right. Where they put you, Overtown. Where they put you, Liberty City. Right. They put you right in the middle of the hood. No. No matter how much money you try to say, okay, I got, I saved up twenty, thirty thousand dollars just so I could get a good house. I got my credit score up. I'm good. Right. Put me somewhere where I can raise my family in peace. Nah, bro, you gonna be over there, Hallelujah. You gonna be over there, open locker. Read. Do a reproach and a curse, cause the reproach and the curse is that. We would have to, we would be niggas and spicks right. living in the ghettos and the slums. The Bible says that we will be a byword and a proverb to all the nations where the Lord will scatter us. That we will be cursed in a city. So no matter where we go, these curses for not keeping God's commandments, not following the laws of the land, they will follow us. No matter where we go in the world. We and to be subject to payments. What? And to be subject to payments. So we gotta pay our mortgage, water bill, light bill, car note, car insurance, pay off for daycare for the kids. We gotta pay, come on, come on. Phone, phone bill, but as you can, you gotta pay for all of that. You ain't nothing free in America. Although they call this place the land of opportunities, it's like, you know what? I don't want to keep their laws. We had a, there's a king that was subject to the king of ne uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. He was like, you know what? The hell with King Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to do my own damn thing. I'm the king of Nari. I'm, I'm King Kong in this thing. Right? I'm the head Negro in charge. And guess what God said? All right, cool. I'm going to send Nebuchadnezzar down there to shackle your behind up and put you in prison. You, your sons, and everybody with you. Matter of fact, take everybody and bring them over here in Babylon. And because of that, we still going through the same thing because we still got that same nigga mentality. That's a nigga mind state. That was created here in America. I don't want to do nothing nobody say because I'm my own man. I'm sovereign. I'm a god. God says, yes, you are a god, but you want to die like men. Because you don't want to keep his commandments. But if you keep his commandments, you absolutely will go from being a man to a god. But you ain't going to get there until you keep and rehearse these commandments until Christ comes and gives you that crown. Until then, you have no say. You got to keep these commandments. You got to follow their laws, whether we like it or not. Hello, this is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.